Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Mellow Production, and today I'm going to be going over M Stereo Fix. People asked me about this before, and I haven't done a video about it because, to be honest, I don't do that much like live recording, so I didn't have a ton of examples. But then I remembered, hey, I actually do have some examples of some drums I recorded a while ago, and so I thought I'd show you how you can use this. For those that don't know, M Stereo Fix is basically a tool to allow you to align microphones or I shouldn't even say align. It aligns them, but it also changes the uh, spectrum and other things in the phase to make them just sound better. So if you're recording maybe a guitar with two stereo microphones and you think eh, this doesn't sound good or maybe in this case drums and the drums sound like they're leaning to one side or another, etc. They just don't sound right. This can help you. So let's get started and I'll show you an example I have here. These are just some drums. These are overheads here first. I'll turn this off so you can just hear them dry. Not the most inspiring drums, but I think you have an idea of what they sound like. Hopefully this will be helpful. What we're going to do here is we're just going to ignore this at first, the automatic stereo fix. Let's just look here at the top. We have output, which is easy to understand. We have the widening, which we can make it wider or we can narrow it to mono. Now that could be useful. Usually I don't want to widen it because this is already stereo, but there are cases maybe you do want to widen it. And you might want to narrow it. That's what I think I'd probably do in most cases, but you never know. Normally, I just not use it at all, but it depends on your material. Under this, we have the audition, and this allows you to swap the sides, listen to the mids, just the sides, just the left or just the right. Now, these are going to come out of both speakers, so it's not going to just be the left side or the right side. I'll demonstrate here. So first, we'll switch the left and right channels. Now, hopefully through that, you can hear that, hey, the left and si right sides do sound like significantly different. And the same thing with the mid and side. I, I want the mid and side to sound you know, different, but the left and right, those are really different. And maybe I don't want that. So if the problem is just the volume, in this case, it's not. But if you have a clip where, you know, just the volume, you can use this right gain. And you can even use these meters over here to kind of tell you which one is the uh, higher or lower in volume. So let's look at this. So you can use that to move it more towards the center. If that's a little bit subtle, let me turn it up a little bit so you can hear it a little bit more prominently. So this is only affecting the gain of the right channel. You're thinking like, what about the left channel? If you want the left channel to be higher in volume, just turn down the gain of the right channel like that. Uh, same thing with the delay. I believe this is the delay of the right channel. I'll let you hear what that does. So this will just help you delay one side or the other. Like I said, you can move it in the positive direction, I believe, for the right channel and the negative direction for the left channel. I'm not exactly sure about that, but as I said, you can use your ears. So if you're trying to just manually use this, these are really good and easy ways to balance it. So sometimes you know there's a problem and you know what it is. This can fix it quickly and easily. The envelope matching is a little bit similar, so it will take the center channel or the left or the right channel and it will match the envelope 
to the other one. So if you notice like, hey, there's lots of reverb on the, let's say, right channel, but not the left, for example, you can use this to kind of balance this out. This is good for some things, but I find it's like, for me, I don't use this as often, but you can definitely check that out yourself. I think the main thing here is the stereo fix, the automatic fix here. And so for this, what you want to do is you want to analyze this, choose, I don't know, maybe about 20, 30 seconds of audio, close to uh, maybe the average audio of your piece. Don't choose a piece where it's really extreme or the right side is really loud and the left side is, you know, off, uh, really quiet. Don't use that. Just choose like a normal uh, piece of audio in between. So let me look right about like here for this piece. You notice here it's like, ah, this right side is really loud and then the, it becomes quiet and the left side becomes really loud. I wouldn't use this part. I would use something in the middle where it's a little bit more even. Analyze it for 10 or 15 seconds and then we can use the loudness delay spectrum and phase to even this out. And you can use the same things uh, here, these advanced things, which will control the maximum amount of delay here, the spectrum limit, so how much the EQ will affect it, how many decibels, and the phase threshold. What's the difference in phase? So let's analyze it first and then I'll turn these on. Here we go. So now I have it analyzed and let's start turning these on. We'll go through them one by one. The first one is loudness. So this will match the loudness between the left and right sides. Uh, here it says loudness values and peak values. Peak values is like this meter here, like how high it's going. The loudness will be like an average. So I don't think it's RMS, maybe it's LU. I'm not exactly sure about that. But anyways, it's going to be an average. So the peaks will still be different, but the overall volume will be somewhat the same. So let's turn that on. It shouldn't be too different in this case. That one, I can tell a little bit of difference, but not much. Next one is the delay between the two channels. I'm not sure how much there is, but usually there's a small bit. And that through the analysis, it analyzes the amount of delay and it will set it for me here. In this case, there's not too much of a delay I'm hearing, so this isn't doing much, but of course that'll depend on your audio. This can actually save you lots of time doing this automatically as opposed to doing it manually. The next one is the spectrum. And what the spectrum will do, it'll try to match the overall EQ between them. And you can use the smoothing to kind of even this out. I believe this is a linear phase EQ, so this will actually introduce some latency. So you probably don't want to use this in real time. So if I was using a bunch of guitar IRs with uh, different uh, you know, phases and things like that, I probably wouldn't want to use this in real time, but you could use it afterwards. Uh, the smoothing will affect how smooth the curves are between the EQ. And the spectrum limit will control how many decibels it will change it at maximum. So here I have it at 20, but if I think ah, I want it a little bit more subtle, I can move this down to like 10 or 5 or whatever. So let's hear that. This is making it a lot brighter and I actually kind of like that. So maybe this is good. And the last one is the phase. So this will even out the phase and it has the same thing with the smoothing here and the phase threshold here. So let's hear that. There we go. There's not a big difference, but I do hear a little bit more bottom end and body for my snare drum. So I like that. Now, all these together seem a little bit subtle, but I'll bypass it all and I'll let you hear the difference between all of them on and versus all of them off.
Now, to me, that sounds much more open and clear, and I like that. But if you think, you know what, this is too much, you can turn down some of the maximum delay, the spectrum limit, the phase threshold, etc. That way you can get a little bit more of a uh, subtle change to this, if that's what you want. Or you can turn any one of these off if you think like, eh, you know, the phase was good, the delay was good, the loudest was good, but eh, spectrum is too much. You can just turn that off if you if you like. So that's a good thing you can do with this. I'll do the same thing on this other one. This is a stereo room track. Very boxy uh, bass drum, but forget about that for a second. Have another instance. Since this is already analyzed, since this copied straight over, I don't want that. So I'm just going to go back to default. It's already solo there. Let's play it and then let's analyze the all the different things here and then let's do it. Oh, don't do it yet. Close. Yeah. So play, analyze. So to me, that's sounding much more open as well, and that's kind of what I want. But let's hear them before and after. So I'll open both of these. Let's turn them both off. I'll play it a little bit, and then I'll turn them on. Let's move to a little bit busier part, like here. Now, to me, doing that just gave everything more width and more depth. It's not doing a ton more with the volume. I see a little bit here, but that actually is a little bit loud there. So it's not actually changing the volume all that much. If you see here, the difference in peak is negative 2.67 to actually 2. That is a little bit louder. So I might want to turn that down a little bit. But overall, you can see that it really does change the stereo and it will fix it. Of course, you might not want it to be so extreme, so certain things you might want to turn down or turn up, you know, just depending on your personal needs. But I think this is a good tool for helping you fix or even just improve the phase and the overall stereo signal, especially with things like drums that are usually recorded in stereo. But you can try this on something else, like maybe for guitars, I might use this if I was using multiple microphones or maybe anything, strings, etc. I hope you found this useful. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions still, leave those down below and check out all the other plugins at meltaproduction.com. Till next time, see you.